We've been kind of on a roller coaster whirlwind for the last few months with all that's going on in our nation, pandemic, uh, crazy life events. Um, just, just in the last few weeks, um, just different stories, different tragic events uh, that are taking place and that, that is, is hitting closer to home. Um, most of you, yesterday we had a celebration of life for, for Chris and Sonny, that riding a motorcycle, accident taken out. Uh, a, a friend of the church, uh, friends of friends in the church, was tragically murdered uh, in Oroville in Berry Creek. Um, and just crazy things, just stuff that just is happening. Uh, this week, Warren's mom's car was stolen out in front of their house. Um, you know, and so you just, just stuff happening and, and what do you do? Where do you go? And just as our nation is, is going crazy, um, I, I want to talk to you this morning in, in the midst of all of these events of, of putting our trust in the Lord. Jeremiah 17, 7 says this, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is the Lord. You know, when we're trying to navigate these days, when we're trying to figure out what's the best way to go, it's kind of nice to have a, 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 a Lord that is kind of like our GPS that helps us navigate through these days, that, that have somebody that's above it all, that can see the end from the beginning, that knows what's happening. And, and as we look to the Lord, as we put our trust there and not in, in stuff down here, the Lord can help navigate us and help to direct our steps and to, to keep us uh, in peace, even in the turmoil, even in the chaos. Because it's so easy. I mean, it, just watching the news, listening to the events, all the stuff that's going on, uh, I, my emotions get all over the place. And at times I just turn everything off because I don't want to listen to it anymore. But, but then you start, what's going to happen and where are we going and, and how's it going to end up? And... Um, and it's just good to sometimes to put our focus back on the Lord and to put our trust in the sure foundation of who he is. Uh, Psalms 112, 17 says, They won't be afraid of bad news. Their hearts are steady because they trust the Lord. They won't be afraid of bad news. Their hearts are steady because of their trust in the Lord. When we put our confidence there, when we look and, and, and he's our, our sure foundation because everything else is sinking sand and shaking, shaking ground, especially in California. You never know when you know, the ground's going to shake. But as we, can, as we put our confidence and our trust and our hope in the Lord, we're not afraid of bad news because we live in a time where just turn on the news. It seems like there's just bad news after bad news after bad news. But when, when our God is our confidence and our hope, it doesn't matter what's being said. We can look to him. You know, I don't know about you, but it's easy to declare, I trust the Lord when everything's going good. Yeah. yeah. When, when everything's rolling, you know, just, you know, the few bumps in the road with life, it's, it's easy to declare, God, I trust you. I trust you. But it's when, it's when, uh, when, when our plans are crushed and our hopes and dreams are destroyed, when things don't seem to make sense, when we are lost and confused, everybody been, anybody ever been lost and confused just in life, just what's going on, Where, what direction do I take, where do I go? Huh? I said that's my state of <laughs> <laughs> That's just where I am. You know, when the foundation of our lives are being shaken, man, it's so hard to just say, God, I trust you. We're, we're fixers. We want to fix the problems. We, we want things to be better. We want it good right now. And to declare and to say, God, I trust you, when everything is just being turned upside down, you know, again, just thinking and dealing with the family of, of Chris and Sonny over, over this last week and just the hole that's in their heart. Uh, talking with the mom, her only child, eight years old. 
I mean, her whole life, gone. Now, yes, we rejoice, we trust God, we thank him that, that, that he's in heaven. But they have to carry on. And in those moments, in those times, is God our anchor? It's easy to say, it's easy, God, I trust you. But, but can we with the psalmist say, Psalms chapter 4, I go to bed and sleep in peace because, Lord, only you keep me safe. When we put our confidence in the Lord, when, when the Lord is our trust, it doesn't matter what's going on. Yes, it, it, it messes with us. But because our confidence is in God, we can go to sleep at night and rest. You know, I don't know, uh, sports fans or maybe uh, mystery novel writer, uh, readers, you know, have you ever been uh, watching a game? I mean, I remember just going back to the Super Bowl last year, the Chiefs and the 49ers. Now, I've, I've followed the 49ers for many years. And, you know, they're, they're winning, they're winning, they're winning, and all of a sudden, the Chiefs are starting, and man, your stomach starts churning, you start getting anxious, you start getting nervous, and it's like, oh man, oh man, what's going to happen, are they going to win, are they going to lose? And, and your emotions are all over, the place. You, you're all in turmoil, or you're watching a movie that's really intense, and, and you're into it. And, and you know the difference when you've seen the movie before? and you're watching it again, and you know the outcome. I, I like the suspense of watching a game and not knowing the end, but I also like knowing the end. <laughs> you don't get as emotionally worked up when you know the end. And that's what God's talking about when he talks about putting our trust in the Lord. Because we know who holds the future. We know the end. That God is with us. And when we put our confidence, our emotions can be more neutral. Or it's not that they don't get involved, but you just kind of know the outcome. That God is for us, not against us. That his blessing is upon us, that he's with us. And so we can, we can relatively walk through life being a little more emotionally steady. And when it comes to sleep at night, we can lay down and sleep in peace. Because we know the Lord has us. We know the Lord is with us. I want to share a couple stories out of the Bible of situations that we might not necessarily find ourselves in these exact situations, but we all have moments of, of difficulty. And so my first story is found in Mark chapter 9. And some of this may be a familiar story to you, but the kind of the backdrop is Jesus and three of his disciples went up onto a mountain, and it's the Mount of Transfiguration, but he left the rest of the disciples down in the valley. valley. And a man comes with a demon-possessed boy for the disciples to heal, to cast the demon out, and they can't do it. And so as Jesus is coming back down the mountain, he encounters this crowd of people and is Jesus, what's going on? And the man comes running up to Jesus and he says, Jesus, help us. My, my boy, there's a demon that attacks him and throws him down and throws him into the water to destroy him or throws him into the fire to destroy him. Please help. And as Jesus gets closer, sure enough, the demon takes hold of the boy and throws him down. And Jesus looks at the father and just says, how long has this been happening? Let me pick up the story. I may have covered some of it. Then, then they brought him to him. And when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him and fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming at the mouth. So we asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? Now, put yourself in the father's shoes. Here's your child, your son. And you have no control over this. You see the destruction. You see the harm that's being done to your child. And you're desperate for answers. And Jesus asked him, how long has this been going on? He says, since childhood. Now, we don't know how old the boy is. 
but there's a distinction of childhood, so he's maybe in his teens, maybe a little older, but this has been going on for a long time. So as a parent, what would you do? You would be, try to be as close as you can to your child at all time to try to pull him out of the water or out of the fire so no more harm comes to him. You have to constantly be on alert, not knowing what's gonna happen. And often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to them that believe. Transpose the word and put trust in there for believe. If you can trust me, do you trust me? All things are possible if you can trust me. Here's, here's the problem. Sometimes our knowledge, no, sometimes our experience sets a bar as to the degree that we can trust God. This has been going on since childhood. Nothing is, can be done. That sometimes our experience begins to lower the level of our expectation and our ability to trust God. It's always this way. There's nothing that we can do. And Jesus, listen to these words, if you can trust me, all things are possible. Raising the level of trust or belief. Get out of your experience. Get out of what you know. Begin to believe for the impossible. Begin to trust that your situation can change, that it can be. There is hope. He's telling the Father, there is hope if you'll trust me. It's, it's, it's so easy just to... God, I trust you, but I become comfortable with my experience. I become comfortable with my situation. It's just the way it is. It's just the way life works. But listen to his words. If you will believe, if you can trust me, all things are possible. Is, the, is there a limit there? To trust God, to have our confidence in him. Sometimes we have to move past our experience, but it's never worked for me. It's never, I've prayed, nothing changes. Don't give up praying. Don't give up asking. Don't begin to settle. For just as this is the way it is. Raise the bar of trust. Raise the bar of belief of what God can do because all things are possible. The second story, John chapter 11. This is the story. Word comes to Jesus that Lazarus is sick. Mary and Martha send out word that, that their brother is sick. And Jesus goes, okay. And he stays put. Well, sure enough, Lazarus dies. He's been dead for four days, and then Jesus shows up. Jesus comes and, and comes to Mary and Martha. And Martha goes, hears that Jesus is coming and runs out to him. Jesus, if you would have just been here, my brother wouldn't have died. You, you could have healed him. Why did you allow this to happen? Jesus says, Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise in the resurrection. Big deal. Well, I want him here now. Now, again, see the bigger story here. Mary and Martha, two sisters, are living with their brother. More than likely, the brother was the source of provision for his sisters. So their whole financial support system has died. What are they going to do? There's here a little bit of panic in Martha's voice. Jesus, what are we going to do? 
Yes, I know he's going to raise in the resurrection. How does that do us any good? Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? This is where we allow our knowledge to get in the way of trusting God. Anybody here ever seen somebody come back to life that was dead? Maybe possibly a nurse. May have res somebody was dead and CPR'd and life and... But other than that, it's, it's not, we don't, you know, we, we go to a funeral not expecting them to get up out of the casket. It's, it's beyond our knowledge. It's, it's, it's up here, there's no way possible. So Martha's not even thinking the possibility that Jesus could raise him from the dead. It's beyond her realm of knowledge and understanding. Just like it would be a long, I mean, if Jesus came to you and a loved one had passed away, said, do you believe? Yes, Lord, I know in the last day that he'll be resurrected with everybody else. But you're not expecting the impossible, something beyond our realm of thinking. How many of us have looked at situations and said it's impossible? There's no way. I don't know how we're going to get out of this. I don't know how it's going to change. And we look through the lens of our knowledge of, of knowing one and one still equals two. You can't get to four with one and one. But with God, all things are possible. And he asked, Martha, do you trust me? Do you believe? Do you believe this? Martha said, yes. Yes. Jesus goes over to the tomb. He wept. He saw their hurt. He saw their heartbreak. Knew what they were going through. Feeling their sorrow. Yesterday, as strong as I tried to be for the family, there was times that the emotion of the moment, the emotion of the family, I had to pause. I had to choke it back. Jesus, in that moment, feeling what they were going through, wept. He knew what he was going to do. He knew he was going to raise lives. God is touched with what we go through. He knows the hurt and the pain, the struggle, and he cares. And he calls Lazarus out. That trusting the Lord in our situations. We have to get past our experience. We have to get past what we know and trust him to do the impossible, to work things out. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. There is two, two choices here in how we live life and how we base our decisions. The, pro, the, the word here says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. That is a choice that we have to make. That we can figure it out. We can lean, put our confidence in our ability to reason, to see it, to think it. Or we can put our confidence and trust in the Lord with all of our heart. To acknowledge him in everything that we do. We get caught in between these two things all the time. Trying to figure it out, trying to rationalize, trying to, to what can I do? How can I do it? Now, there's kind of a marriage of the two because God will use our knowledge and our understanding. But where's our heart? 
If it's like, God, I got this, I'll figure it out. Or God, give me wisdom. Look, last night, every, every Saturday, I, I write a blog and I send it to Colin. And he puts it on the website. And then on Sunday morning, I, I put it on Facebook. And yesterday, again, I was just mostly tired, wiped out. And, and he sent me a text about 8.30 and said, uh, are you, you going to do the blog? Uh, and he was gracious and kind. He said, hey, just let it go. I know it's been a big day and just it's okay. And I was, just, I was on the couch, <sighs> vegging out. And in my mind, I said, God, I need your help. I have absolutely no idea what to write. So I sat there for about 45 minutes, and then I went into the office at home, and, okay, God, I put my hands on the keys. <laughs> Let it come. <laughs> and God started using my mind. Words started to form, and hand keys started to be hit. But I put my confidence. I didn't sit there and go, okay, mind, let's figure this out. What could you write about? It's like, God, you are my source. You are my strength. God, I need you right now. Illuminate my mind. I put my trust in you. And God was faithful. So there's a marriage of the two. But it starts with putting our confidence and having all of our hope in him, that God will direct our steps. He will give his wisdom to know what to do and how to carry it out. I would have hated to think what I would have written if I was just relying on my own ability. Proverbs 16 says this, some people think they are doing right, but in the end it leads to death. That when we lean into our own understanding, it can make sense. We can think we're doing the right thing. And yet it falls apart. It doesn't bring the desired result. That putting our hope and our confidence in God. If we are, next slide, if we are spending more time looking to ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, and Fox, Oprah, Dr. Phil, or Dr. Oz, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or any other social media site, Democrats or Republicans, over God's word, you might be in a situation where you are leaning on your own understanding. That if that is the sole source of our intake of information and knowledge, we're going to be, have a skewed view of life, of the way things are working. Because how I many you know you can trust everything that you hear on TV, on the internet? Oh, yeah. Okay? Especially in this hour in which we live, in the day in which we live. Look, I'm not telling you not to watch or do those things, but if that's your sole source of information, you're going to have a skewed view of life. And if it's triumphing over this, if you're spending more time in that than this, you might be in a situation where you're going to lean more to your own understanding. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That he is truth. That his word is truth. John 14. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Okay? Again, I apologize for keep referring back to yesterday, but I'm going to refer back to yesterday. I, I had a moment of epiphany. You have an audience of people that, that are there. And it's an opportunity that in that moment, everybody's forced to, to view, to real, look at their own life and their own sense of mortality. You're at a funeral. We're all going to end up there at some point, unless Jesus comes back and we're resurrected. So I want to present the gospel to them. I want to give them an opportunity to at least know the truth. And so one of the things that I said was, you know, someday we're all going to stand before God. Now... I know that there are people that go, well, I don't believe that. That's okay. That's your right. But Jesus said, I am the way, the truth. God doesn't force his truth on us, 
but it's just the truth. And you, can, you have a choice to either accept it or reject it. And so as we look at the Word of God, as we look at this, this is truth. If you look at the next slide, it says, sanctify them by your truth. Your Word is truth. Now, a lot of things that we hear or, or listen to may not be truth, but Jesus said this is truth. That if we want to know reality, if we want to know what's true, just an example. You don't get to pick your gender. This is truth. We were created male and female. That's truth. Now, if you want to believe other than that, that's fine. That's your right. That's your choice. God gives you that right. But there's no empirical evidence that it's true. God's word is true. And to line up that when we say we trust him, does our life line up with truth? Do what we say, what we believe, does it line up with truth? John 17, John, uh, or Psalms 19, 119, 190. Your, the entirety of your word is truth, and every one of your righteous judgments endures forever. God, I trust you. God, my hope and my confidence is in you. But if I don't spend any time in this, Do I really trust him? Because if he says this is truth, if this is reality, what's in this book, and I'm not in the book, then do I really trust him? Remember the whole thing about going to sleep at night? God, I'm not worried about any bad news, that I can trust you. Our confidence is in this. Our confidence is in what he says. Because if we're just relying on our own ability to figure it out or to get through it, I'm not that smart. I don't know how to figure it out. But if I trust him and I follow this, God is faithful and he's true and he will back up his word. Amen? Yeah. Amen. In the day and age and time in which we live, it is imperative that we put our confidence and our hope and our trust in God to navigate us through the days that are coming. We don't know what lies ahead, but God does. And when this becomes our source of life, we will navigate and we'll make it through because God promises that he will go with us through it and he'll navigate us through it. And he'll make all things work together for good to his promises. And look, there are some times when life is throwing everything at me that God, I, I have to look at God and say, God, I don't know how you're going to get any good out of this, but I trust you because that's what your word says. And I can have peace because I'm putting it in the confidence of what his word says. If we don't know what his word says, where does our peace come from? Let's stand. All things are possible to them that trust him. As we go from this place, just ask yourself, how much of my experience has, is keeping me from really trusting God? Or how much is my knowledge keeping me from trusting God. In, in your sources of information, how much time are you spending in a lot of other things than the Word of God? Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this time. God, I thank you that through it all, God, we can put our hope in you. God, you are a sure foundation. And when all, everything's shaken around us, God, you will navigate us through it. God, help us to trust you more, to have confidence in your ability to sustain us. 
God, I pray for our nation. God, I pray that you would silence the lying lips. Lord, that you would remove the kings that have set themselves up against you. Lord, let righteousness rise and prevail. God, let truth and justice, God, once again be the foundation of our country. God, I thank you that no matter what we go through, you are with us. God, this day we put our hope and our confidence and our trust in you. God, in your name we pray. Amen.